All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this talk. If you've always been interested in getting into the voiceover industry, wondering how you can get your voice into a commercial, into a movie trailer, into a documentary or an e-learning, then this is the correct platform for you. So today's presentation is on want to be a voiceover artist. <laughs> and uh, to start with, I hope everyone is doing well. Let me introduce myself. My name is Cynthia Kimola, and I'm a professional voiceover artist, and I've been doing this for the past 11 years. I started out in 2008, and um, yeah, I voice both in English and Swahili, and also um, since now global clients like the African accent because they want to show that they're diverse and they're inclusive. I also um, describe myself as an African voiceover artist. And I can do various accents. I can do a Nigerian Uga accent. I can do a South African accent, Kenyan accent, of course. And for Swahili, I can do both the Mombasa accent and the Tanzanian accent. So my voice is described as warm, uh, authoritative, and confident. And this means that I've been able to get a lot of narration projects which require long form, you know, like features, like documentaries. I've had uh, authoritative commercials that I've gotten to do, even e-learning. And also I get a lot of motherly characters or professional characters that I get to play. So as we start then, who is a voice artist? You might wonder. Um, a person who narrates, if you're listening to anything, if it is a film, a radio commercial, an internet video, and you hear that a voice has been put on top of a track, um, is it, be it music, be it other characters, then that is spoken material, all right? And the person who reads or narrates that spoken material is called a voiceover artist. So my background, I am a communication major, and I actually studied communications, electronic media, specifically at the university, at Daystar University. So if you're watching and you are from Daystar University, Please drop a smiley on the on the chat section there. And because of this, I used to actually work in the radio station at school there. So that is how I got to get into voiceover work. Started off in 2008 the, at Daystar University. There was a studio there, a radio station called Shine FM. Of course, I love everything to do with audio because when I was young, I used to really love listening to commercials on radio and TV. And I would emulate how those voices, all right, how I would hear it. I would also emulate it and put my own twist to it. And then listening to radio. I love radio because it's the theater of the mind. So you can just concord anything um, depending on the person who is talking and depending on how um, they convey emotion through that. So. In the school radio station, I actually was a presenter there. And then because we have different shows, right? I actually used to offer myself like, hey, I'm going to do a, a promo or a commercial for this and for that. I'd even approach different uh, school organizations and tell them, hey, you have an event. Let me do the voiceover for you. And then you're going to play it on the, on the, on the station. So that's how ad hoc I started doing voiceovers not too professionally, but at least I knew how to use the equipment. I knew how to use to put different sound effects and just to make it interesting. So for me, it was a practice session and I totally loved it. And then after graduation, because of the work I was doing at the radio station, it was easier for me when applying uh, for a station job. I actually applied to Classic 105. And because I was working at the radio station, I was reading news, I sent my demos, even plus my commercial demos, and I was able to be picked to work there. So while at Classic 105 Radio Africa, uh, which houses KISS, um, yeah, now Smooth FM and also Homeboys, while there, I was reading the news, but also there are these things called classified. They're like 15 second punchy commercial ads that run sequentially. Like you'll hear one, two, three or five of them at once, right? So those are the ones that I started doing. Uh, it would be these companies that couldn't afford too much um, to pay upfront. So they would be squeezed into a classified. And I think you've had them, like maybe um, House of Leather is having a sale, 50% off, starting from 24th on Saturday to Monday. Harry, get your pick. Those kind of things, those are the classifieds. 
Um, and then those were just internal things that I was just doing at the station. And then at a training event that I went um, for by interviews, I actually got to network uh, with a KBC presenter. We really hit it off. She was a Swahili presenter. I can never forget her name. Her name was Ambia Hese. And I told her, Ambia, I really want to get into doing commercials. How how do I get it? How do I do it? And then she was like, ah, I'll give you my agent's name and number. His name is Paxson Googie. I was like, what? That's cool. So when I went back to work, I just emailed him because I previously had the demos I was doing for the classifieds. I explained who I was, the, described my voice, described uh, what I'm looking for. And then I, I attached my demos and set, sent them to him. And he was impressed and he was like, okay, give me more details about this. And then I signed like a, a contract. So the thing is, if you have an agent, um, for everything you make, they take 20% of what you make. So for me, I really didn't mind because I needed to be visible and I needed to be heard and I needed to be in spaces where I am considered. And he was going to do all the legwork for me. I was just going to sit in my booth and he'll call me and tell me, hey, there's an audition here to these studios. Go. And I would go hey, come and record this. The client has chosen your voice and I would do that. So that's how I started booking gigs. So from 2012, when I was working at Radio Africa, all the way to 2018, let's say, that's how I used to operate with Parks and Googie calling me to do auditions or calling me for booked jobs. That's how I used to do it. Then um, I took a break. I went to school in the UK, didn't think about voiceovers anymore. And then I came back and then the pandemic happened. And uh, it really made me see like, what do I really value? What do I love doing? And I remembered, hey, I really enjoy doing voiceovers. So how can I still pursue this, but make it a business? And now that I'm back in Kenya, how can I still do it in Kenya, but also ensure that my voice is known globally? And that's how I went through um, a rabbit hole on YouTube. And I found that there are actually people who are making loads of money doing voiceover work and I got to learn from them that there are various websites that you can do, different strategies that you can employ so that you can be able to stand out and be seen not only locally but also internationally. So uh, to say all that, um, I've, I wanted to highlight some of the clients that I've worked with, the Kenyan clients and international clients and also regional clients. Um, in Kenya, I've done the KCB bank ad um, it was just shot recently. It's the go-ahead one. So it's the female go-ahead one. Uh, for SBM Bank, um, it's an IVR or a phone messaging. You know, when you're calling Safaricom and then you're told, press one, press two to talk to this and this. Suppose SBM, it was about press one if you need customer care assistance, press two if you want to talk to the retail banking department, press three, things like that. Telcom Kenya, the same, AAR, it was an advert about their new um, centers. KCC, this KCC one is close to my heart because it was the very, very first TV ad that I got. And I was a character. I was a, a cow. <laughs> I was playing a cow in the KCC Maziwa Origi uh, advert. And I was the Swahili cow. And if you guys remember that chat, just put in the chat that, hey, I remember that. I remember it. And then for international clients, the one that's close to my heart is the YouTube one. And this um, before you were playing or you were listening to any video on YouTube, I was the voice that you were hearing telling you to wear a mask, keep safe, keep a safe, safe distance, wash your hands. That was me. I've done some work also with WHO during this COVID period and Mark, Fuzu, Netherlands Development Bank, Greenpeace Africa, just to name a few. Um, so most of you were actually interested in knowing where or how or how to package yourselves for voiceover. So I just wanted to glance through the niche sectors um, that your voice can be used for voiceovers. So for commercials, these are radio commercials, TV commercials, internet commercials that um, are played on YouTube or also on social media, Facebook, Instagram. You know, sometimes you see sponsored posts, your voice can be used there. Movie trailers, you can get a job as a voiceover doing that. Narration, this falls into the category of, um, you know, like you're narrating something, 
um, a situation, a project, that's something that you do. Audiobooks are really, really hitting off. So this is something that you, you should really um, be keen on. And it's now, authors are now turning their books into audiobooks. So it's easy for you to get jobs here. Gaming, this is also very popular. And there's a rise of uh, games actually incorporating voices into, into their gamification just to make it interactive animations, cartoons, series, um, phone messages, you know, like a hold messages, you can use that. Explainer and training videos are the same because now also with the pandemic, people are learning from home. So there was an explosion of explainer videos or voiceover work for explainer videos coming about. And of course, right now, podcasts are the in thing. So you can get someone who scripts the podcast and they just want you to voice it and that's something that you should say yes to um the other thing uh rose wanted me to highlight is to help you find maybe where to get voiceover work in kenya how this is just according to how i have been doing it uh, for me it's referrals like i told you i first got into this industry through a referral so I talked to someone and I told them, hey, I really want to get into voiceover. How do I do it? So the person referred me to their agent and now he also became my agent. So shout about what you want to do. Um, talk to people maybe in the industry that you're looking for, uh, people maybe other journalists or production managers or people who work in studios. Tell them, hey, I really want to get into voiceovers can you can i come in for a demo can i come in for an audition could you call me could you consider me that's how you do it for radio stations as i told you um they do a lot of classifieds right so what you can do is try and find out maybe who is the person who is in charge of commercials or who is in charge of recording this classified and send them your demo and tell them hey I'm really interested in this. You can consider me for it. Or if you maybe know a journalist or find an email and just send the email there, shoot your email there with your demo, you can be able to be considered. The other crucial one that you should not ignore is voice over websites. And later on in the presentation, I'm going to show you the websites that I'm on that you can also get on. And you just, uh, from here in Kenya, you get jobs to audition for. And if the client likes your voice, then you're picked and you get to do the job and you get your money. The other way is social media. So Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So for social media, it's basically you, how you use it, all right? You can either use your social media to advance yourself in your career or you can just use it for fun. So for me, how I look at social media, I look at, at it as a way to network. I'm able to meet so many people that I wouldn't be able to meet physically. So if I see someone works in an advertising agency, I connect with them and then I tell them or ask them or inform them that, hey, I'm a voiceover artist. Um, this is the type of work I have done or this is what I'd like to get into. So if you have any projects that fit me or you need a voice artist, would you please just refer my name so that I can be called for auditions? And most of the time they say, yes, drop me an email. And that's how you get to be on top of people's minds. The other way is called calling companies. So you you just get a hold of some companies that you're interested to work with or to do voiceovers for. Like for example, a dentist, right? So you call them and like, hey, so I can see that you, you are a dentist and you're here. And what I can offer you is maybe do a voiceover. When I'm calling, I can I can see that the receptionist maybe doesn't pick. Why can't why can't I just do a voiceover for you with a phone message just to help people ease the process, you know. And um, then the other thing you can tell them, hey, I can do a voiceover to promote your business and you can run it on social media. So you just identify the companies and the gaps that you see. And then you just pitch yourself to be like, hey, I can actually do a voiceover for you. The other thing is also consider NGOs. They do a lot of reports and for them, they need to document their work uh, so that they can show proof to donors that they have utilized their money properly. So NGOs, um, you can actually talk to them and tell them like, hey, whenever you're doing a feature or a documentary, I am the to-go person. Pick me, I can do a good work for you. So the websites that I use to land uh, voiceover work, uh, global voiceover work, because you can get clients from all over, work with people from USA, from South Africa, from China, from Canada, these websites work. 
Fiverr is a gig uh, type of website, right? So you, you're the one to say what you want to offer them. So for me, it's voiceovers. And you start from where you are. If you're a beginner, uh, as the name suggests, Fiverr, like you charge $5 and above, but you can charge as much as you want. But I always say just start maybe at that threshold of $5 as you move up so that you can get your reviews. And then after you've gotten maybe your first five reviews, you can review your your rate upwards. Voices.com is also another favorite of mine. But the thing is, this one, you need to pay, to pay a, a subscription or a membership for you um, to get in or to get regular. So what I, I did or what was lucky for me is I was, you can, I just set up a profile, you know, just being ready. And then someone privately um, messaged me to try out an audition and they liked my audition. So from the money that I got from that payment, I actually uh, bought a membership subscription and I've had it all year round. And that's how I've been getting my consistent voiceover work. Um, the other website is Voices One, Voice One to Three, Voice Crafters, Voquent, Voice Talent Online. This app works. So the common things about this website is you need to sign yourself up, set up your profile, describe who you are, the type of voice you have, the type of um, voice work you want to do, commercial. You so I, I actually showed them in the previous slide. You want to do adverts, you want to do audio books, all that. And then the crucial thing is you need to upload a demo. So that's why it's crucial for you to have a demo that you can actually upload so that someone can hear how your voice sounds and if you would be a fit for their project. Um, from the questions that I, I received from Rose, um, most of you are asking, how is the industry in Kenya? How's the voice industry in Kenya? Um, it's quite vibrant. It's quite vibrant. It has so many members in it and it's close-knit. So some of them know each other right? And uh, because the voiceover people also double up as actors, also double up as some of the producers, they know each other because they work in the, in the same fields mostly. Um, but also that does not mean if you're not in there, you cannot penetrate. Believe in yourself. And with all the strategies that I'm giving you, you'd be able also to be part of it. But I can also say that it has potential for growth in terms of um, the standardization of the pay rates, um, there's potential for growth because now more and more production companies are coming about. Potential of growth because more companies are now seeing the need for video content. And of course, video content needs to be accompanied by music and some form of voiceover. So we are seeing now a lot of work being generated. Um, for you now, how can you get started in the voiceover industry in Kenya? The most important thing is to get a demo done. So what you can do, if you're in university and you guys have a radio station, go to the studio and record a demo. And where do you get the scripts? Just online. From these platforms, from the websites I've mentioned, if you have signed yourself up, then you'll be able to see some of the scripts that are there. That are there. So you pick those scripts and then you just record yourself. Instructions are given, like this is a conversational read, this is an authoritative read read with this and this accent so just follow the instructions and also um practice practice a lot until you're able to speak fluently you're able to capture that emotion and the other thing is for you to audition often because you're a voice actor actors audition for for parts they audition for jobs so don't i i also have not come to that point where i'm like what they want me to audition don't they know i'm thinking i can never say that because i know as a voice actor actor right i have to audition for work i audition like um with these online sites maybe 10 auditions a day so you can imagine even for me where i'm at at my level i still have to audition you're not just handpicked yes locally sometimes you're handpicked because someone has worked with you previously and they'll say you know what i want her voice uh, but sometimes it's not it's not usually often i can also go to the same audition call outs that productions give out and I go. And how do you know about auditions? Follow pages of production houses. Nowadays, they put the audition call out on their Instagram pages, on WhatsApp status, on their Facebook pages. And once you've also put it out there to people that you want to do voiceovers, they'll put you in mind. So if they see an audition, they send it to you. That's what happens to me most of the time. 
And the other thing is networking. It's actually very good that we have this forum because now you guys have gotten to know me. So if I get maybe um, a call out that is seeking maybe a voice that is younger, I can always just, if you, we have connected, I can always just send you that audition and you can be able to go. So you need to network with your teachers, network with other people in the industry who are already doing the thing that you want to do, network with the production crew, network with the audio directors, just find out who they are, and you can be able now to be recommended for jobs. The other thing is volunteer. How I used to do it, yeah? Um, in church, we started this thing where you do announcements, right, via video. So I volunteered to do the Sunday um, announcement. So it'd be like, welcome to Deliverance Church Umoja. This Sunday in the announcement, remember, the men's conference is coming up. Um, remember, there's the Jumia meeting every Wednesday at 7 p.m. See, those are things that you can volunteer for. And someone in the audience can be like, wow, that lady has a good voice. That guy has a really good voice. So whenever maybe they are asked if they know a voiceover person or if someone can actually work on a project for them, they can remember that lady or that guy um, at church or that lady who volunteered to be an MC. Um, and you can be called for projects. So right now, um, what I want to do is to answer the questions that you gave to Rose and she sent them to me. And I think this would be more interactive and we can be able to just go over everything that you specifically want to know. So the first question I got is, when did you join the voiceover industry? And I referred to that. I joined it, let's say, professionally in 2012 when I started working at uh, Classic 105 and I got to network um, with the KBC presenter who was also able to hook me up with her agent and the agent now was able to get me um, into auditions, right? So, because I didn't know anyone. So, Paxson, now my agent, was a very critical person because back then I didn't know how to maneuver that industry. I didn't know any creative directors. I didn't know so many of the studio people. So, he was the one, like, you know, linking us up. So, that's how I, I started it in 2012. Uh, the second question is, how is the voiceover industry, how does it look like in Kenya? I've answered that in a previous slide. And yeah, it's vibrant. There's potential for growth. Don't think that it is too saturated because everyone's voice is unique. Don't try and emulate anyone. You can try and just, you know, put in the best practices, but your voice is your voice. Your voice is unique. It's how you deliver. It's how you convey the emotion. And also the client sometimes, you know, they have a voice in their head that they're looking for, and maybe it is you who has it. So don't try and emulate how Cynthia speaks or how Oprah speaks or, you know, just be you. Don't be, don't try to be another Mayanak again. No, you can only be yourself. You can learn from them. You can learn intonation from them. But when you're going for these auditions, just speak as yourself and follow the instructions that you're given. And the third question is, what does it take to be the best in this industry? First of all, you need to be humble. As I told you, in this industry, you have to audition, even if you're a pro <laughs> or you're a beginner, you still have to audition. So sometimes because you're working with people and these things take a lot of people, like you'll have the client there, you'll have the creative director also there with you, you'll have the audio engineer there with you. If you're someone who's really hard to work with, imagine you won't be called back. Because you'll be like, ah, ah, we are ni mambo mengi. I, I don't even want to deal with her again. The other thing is, now, from going out to physical auditions, you must be able to audition every day and practice every day. As I told you, I do maybe 10 auditions a day. And for me, I get them online. And I just practice and practice and practice because things change. Nowadays, people want more conversational reads. So you just read a copy just you, as you would be talking to your friend, like you'd be talking to your to your mother, but you convey that emotion and the same passion. So to keep up with the standards of the industry, you have to audition every day. The other thing for you to be the best in this industry is know how to talk to the right people and network with the right people. So as I said, utilize your social media correctly. Um, right now, what you can do is just go and put hashtag production houses in Kenya or studio houses in Kenya or something of the sort, or even go to Facebook and follow groups like the Advertising um, Advertising Association of Kenya, things like that, or advertising people. 
just put something like that and you'd be able to find these groups. Um, for me also, I, I actually network in groups, global groups, like voiceover groups, and uh, they comprise of people in Kenya, in Africa, and also globally, and I'm able to learn from them what are the best practices as well. The other thing is for you to be the best in the industry, protect your voice. This is your tool. This is your medium. So you need not to go around just, you know, shouting and whatnot and drinking as well. Yes, you can drink, but just ensure if you're going for an audition the next day, if you're going to be called, then you must ensure that your your voice is at optimum length, all right? At the optimum, um, what do you call it? It's It's working at its optimum base, all right? And this ensures that you drink a lot of water, all right? You need to ensure that your money maker, your voice is lubricated. You also need to ensure that you're doing maybe some mouth exercises because you get these things we call pops when you're reading something and it comes from and back. So you don't want a lot of that when you're doing your auditions because that will take a lot of time and you don't actually sound like an expert in that. That the fourth question is, how does one sharpen their voice and be able to market themselves? So for me, I'd, I'd say continue with auditions and practicing. Um, that's how you sharpen your voice. Try and do um, different types of reads. Maybe if you always want to do just documentaries, why don't you try an animation? Try and emulate maybe a cartoon that you love. You never know. Maybe your voice is best suited for an animation, or maybe you can play all those parts. And ensure also that you're consuming the correct type of content. Like I listen to a lot of vo YouTube channels for by voice over artists globally and also podcasts. And you're able to hear some techniques that they use um, to be able to be their best and be at their optimum. There's something called voice fatigue where if you're talking a lot, I think you've also experienced this. Sometimes if maybe you're talking a lot so much, you feel tired and you feel strained. So that's not good for your voice. So also you need to understand that when you're in a noisy place, you're not just shouting all about and you're not you're not um you're not putting your voice on into undue pressure. Like you're you're just using it how it's supposed to be used. The second bit of the question is how do you market yourself? This is something to be honest that I'm also learning. How I'm marketing myself is I'm reaching out to people in my network and telling them, hey, I'm a voiceover artist. I'm a voiceover artist. If you have a project, hey, I'm your girl, call me. Then what I'm also doing, I've done this year and also last year, I've started putting it out on my social media and letting people know that I'm a voiceover artist by seeking permission from the clients that I've worked with to put my the, the, the work that I've done or the ads or the commercials online. So someone can see the work I've done and hear the work that I've done and call me up and be like, oh, Cynthia, you're actually doing voiceovers. I really like the KCB ad that you did. Why don't you come over and try this one? And also my friends, because they have seen my work and had my work, they're able to refer me if they hear anyone in their circles who are looking for a voiceover artist. So utilize social media and especially LinkedIn. LinkedIn has the most generic reach and it has people who actually are there, you know, to network. So ensure that you're using the correct hashtags, you know, put hashtag voiceover, write a post and say, introduce yourself, um, that you are interested in voiceovers. If you've done any demos, plug them in there so that someone can see and hear what you have been able to do. And after you have done your work, maintain that close relationship with the, with the client or with the studio house uh, that has called you, with the radio station that they've called you. So that at least, you know, you're just keeping base and keeping in touch so that you're on top of mind every time maybe there's a new job that's coming in. So for me, marketing right now, social media is the way to go. Shout about it. Tell them that you're doing it because that's how you are marketing yourself and put your work there. The fifth question is, how does one get projects to work with in this industry? Um, I've touched on that. Network, websites, voiceover websites you can use, referrals. You know, try that. And then how does one stand out and be unique in the voiceover industry? I've touched that on that a bit as well. Um, be professional, be humble. Um, when you're told to appear for audition at 10 a.m., keep time 
and appear there, all right? Ensure that you're following instructions because you don't want to be difficult to work with. And also the unique bit of your voice artistry now comes about when you actually practice um, the auditions often, when you go and grab the script so that your voice now, you can be able to turn it into, you know, a, a quirky little person. And you can also be deep and authoritative and, you know, listen to me. So your voice has range. So that's something that you're able, that you will be able to do and will make you be unique because someone can call you for a serious a voiceover job and someone can call you for a fun, playful type of job. Um, the seventh question, I love this one. When working with projects to be a voiceover artist, how does one put his or her rate card? Now, this depends. If you're a beginner, I would say take the money that is being offered because you're starting out, all right? I'm not saying that, you know, you should let someone just run you over with a very, very low rate. But when you're starting out, you want to build rapport, you want to be within the networks. Um, what you look at is the number of words, how I put for my jobs, the number of works and the number of words, sorry, where it will be used. Will, be, will it be used on TV, on radio? Because if it will be used in these mediums, then they will need commercial rights, right? Uh, because they, they will use it maybe to make money and to make sales. So they need those commercial rights. In Kenya, most of these radio ads that you hear I usually quoted between 20,000 shillings and 40,000 shillings. That's usually the going rate. For TV, it can be an upwards, it can be, the range can be maybe 20,000 all the way to 100,000. It just depends with the client and the studio and all that. And also remember, if you're working with an agent, the agent takes 20% of everything that you make. So if you do a job and you are paid 20,000, uh, 2,000 belongs to your agent, all right, because they have brought that client to you, um, they have connected you to them, and yeah, so keep that in mind. And also, there's a rate card um, that I use for a guide from Voices.com. This is an international rate card, but you can just customize it for yourself to be able to know. So between, um, if, if an ad or something is between zero all the way to 60 minutes, the rate you can charge maybe is between 10,000 shillings all the way to 25,000 shillings. So the more words or the more time it takes, the higher you put because that's the time taken. And ensure in your quotes, right, you're able to put in, this This is even, even if you're doing the website ones, right, you put the rate for your voice and also for the time taken for you to create this rate. And also for other voiceover artists, they charge for live directed sessions. You have some clients, and this has happened to me, global clients who want to dial in via Zoom while you're recording so that they can direct you. Like, okay, Cynthia, repeat that line again. Okay, I need more, more emotion here. I need you to stress this word. So that is what is called a live directed session. And you can also um, be able to charge that. But if you're a beginner, I say just take what you get and then now move on up. But also know that when you're called, don't try, um, what do you call it? Don't put it in your mind. Like this is like, if I've told you it's 40,000 shillings and then you're called for a job for 20,000 shillings, don't refuse to do it, right? Sometimes you can try and negotiate upwards. If then they don't agree, you can choose to walk away or you can choose to do it. So sometimes I choose to do such jobs because that is a relationship that I'm creating with this client and with this studio, and I can be called again. And next time now I tell them like, no, this is my read, right? And then um, this question about marketing our, uh, ourselves actually came up often. And as I told you, this is also something that I'm learning to do, but social media is what we need to take advantage of. And what I've been seeing from the international plan or international voiceover artists that I follow, is they're usually coming up with posts so you can have a dedicated or use your personal page or open up another page and ensure that you showcase your work. You can use scripts from the internet and read them, all right? And then just create a nice image and stick it onto your LinkedIn or onto your Facebook or your Twitter and write, hey, I'm a voiceover artist. If you have any projects, call me. And yeah, these ones I've talked about, the one I'll, I'll talk about is number 10, equipment to start off with. So for me, I didn't have equipment when I started back in 2012. As I told you, I used to use the school studio. 
So if you're in a school with a studio or if you have friends who work in a studio, take advantage of that because that's free equipment that you can use to practice and come up with a demo. And that demo or these two or three demos that you have are the ones that you're going to use to email the production houses and tell them, I'm a voiceover artist. If you have a project, call me. Right now, what I'm using is a USB condenser mic. And the, what I mean is it's a USB mic so I can plug it straight into my computer and then I'm able to record with it. And I love it because it's a portable mic. It's uh, called a Uhuru USB mic and I got it off Amazon. And it was just under $50, so it's under 5,000 shillings. But whatever mic you use, just ensure that it is clear and you're using the proper um, microphone technique to ensure you get the correct sound. The other thing you can do is hire a studio if you want. Um, you go and tell them, hey, I want to get some demos done. And the rate can be, they can charge you maybe 3,000 shillings or less or more, it depends on your studio, and you're able um, to get your demo done. The other thing is sometimes when I'm actually caught up in a, in a crunch, and I did this with uh, someone here, is I actually just use my phone. If you're in a quiet place, nowadays these smartphones are fantastic. Um, you just cover yourself with a duvet, make sure you're in a quiet place, and you just put the, the phone at a distance, right? Not too far, but just close enough that you don't get too many pops. And you read the copy, and sometimes you get really, really clear copy. Um, so that's also one way you can be able to um, create your, your demo. But if you can, the microphone is the, the way to go because you get good quality sound from there. So as we are winding up the tips for you to succeed, let me just uh, repeat them, is get yourself a demo. You can't say you're a voiceover artist if you don't have a demo. So as I said, you can, you can record if you have a studio in your school or at home or know someone, go there, get a demo done. If you don't know, have all that, use your phone. Just ensure you're in a quiet place, you get clean, clear audio, cut it all out and upload them on the websites that I mentioned so that you can sign up and create a profile and upload those demos there. And then network and reach out to, to people. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm a voiceover artist. I'm interested in this. If you have any projects, please consider me. And then they will they will get to have you in their database because they have that. I actually did several of that of those this year, and two of those studios actually came back to me. And also, if they particularly don't have work for you, and they their own networks or people they know are looking for a voiceover artist, of course you are the one who's going to be referred. The other thing is get involved in your school radio. In church, church has equipment, guys. <laughs> you know, you you feel like, oh, I'm doing all this thing for free, but look at what you're gaining. Church has churches have microphones, right? Churches have sound engineers or audio engineers, so you can link up with them and tell them, like, hey, can I do a demo with you? And that will be most of them will be fine with that. And then you have a free demo that is there and free equipment for you to practice whenever you want. Um. And that fourth one is actually tied to the fifth one where I'm encouraging you to volunteer at church, volunteer at school, NGOs, because doing these free work at times actually helps to build your portfolio. So when someone asks you, okay, you say you are a voiceover artist, what work have you done or which clients have you worked with? You can say, hmm, I actually worked with Deliverance Church, I actually worked at our school radio station, and you have demos and you have work to prove it. So first of all, that actually builds your credibility because someone sees, oh, they've worked with someone before and they actually produced good work, right? So you can be um, taken in. Then the sixth one, something that I'm also doing right now <laughs> is marketing myself on social media. So every time I, I finish a project, I ask for permission for the client to get a copy of the project and then I put it on social media. I say um, that I'm the one who voiced that ad or documentary and I also mention the client and then I, I, I put it out there like, hey, if you're ever looking for a voiceover artist, DM me or email me here and you'll see me. And then I'm utilizing hashtags. Um, if you search right now, put hashtag Kenyan voiceover artist. Most definitely I will come up. If you put Cynthia Kimola voiceovers, definitely I will come up. If you put the hashtag voiceover, definitely I will come up. So what I'm doing is whenever someone actually 
puts those hashtags, I'm targeting key hashtags, I will definitely come up and they'll be able to hear my demo or hear my work and they will reach out to me. And then the seventh one, this is important guys. If you're multilingual, imagine you're advantaged because already as Kenyans, we speak English and Kiswahili, almost everyone. But what makes you unique? As someone asked, by the way, this is what makes you unique. If you can speak your mother tongue, if you can speak Kikuyu, if you can speak Luo, we have so many vernacular radio stations here that you can also take your demos to. And you can say, hey, I can do an ad for you. I, uh, for example, uh, I actually saw a week ago that there was a call out for an animation and they wanted people who could do it in Kikuyu. So automatically I was out <laughs> because I can speak Kikuyu. But if you can speak Kikuyu and you can do an animation and the client likes you, imagine you go in. If you can speak regional languages like French, because you get a lot of Congolese people, people in West Africa speak French, you can be able to get jobs on that side. If you can speak German, you can also get jobs on that side. So don't shy away from your mother tongue and from all other languages that you can speak. And then the other thing for you to be visible is to audition often. If you see a call out, someone has written, let's say Cox Studio or something and looking for voice of artists, go, go and audition. If you see an audition call out and you have time, please go because this is how you get to know these production houses. You also get to interact with other voice of artists. And if someone has an opportunity that they cannot do, they can automatically think about you. So for example, that Kikuyu animation that I couldn't do, I remember that someone who can do it and I sent it to them. And right now we're waiting to see if they're going to get it or not. So this kind of like, now I'm getting into summarizing uh, the presentation. Um, go for it, guys, go for it. There is money to be made out here. And now companies are actually looking on global clients as well and looking for global voices, you know, so you get a lot of interest. People are coming in and looking for African voice over accent. And Kiswahili is also really growing because companies are trying to, to reach out to a larger demographic um, here in Kenya and also across the world. So please, please, please go for it. Ensure you have a demo. I learn every day from these YouTube channels. It's not like I've gotten to a point where I'm relaxed and I think I know everything. No, the industry is ever evolving and it's changing and it's quite innovative. So these are the YouTube channels that I actually um, listen to often. There's Voices from voices.com, the website that um, gives you voiceover work. They also have resources on voices. Just go to YouTube and type that out. There is this guy called Anthony Pika. His YouTube channel is a viewer's journey. Fantastic guy. He uses Fiverr a lot. And if you want to learn how to use Fiverr as a voice of an artist, this is a channel that you should be able to go and listen to. He has taught me a lot and I'm totally grateful for him. Then there's Bill DeWees. He's a US voice of an artist. Fantastic guy. Um, he's been in the industry for so long and he shares so much wisdom there. And he actually... Um, really, really focuses on beginners as well. So for you to get any tips on how you're, you're, you're supposed to charge, he's the one who actually tells you, you know what, at that time, take what you're getting and now see yourself as building a portfolio, all right? And getting referrals and networking with people. The other guy also I like his voice over masterclass is also an old guy who's been in the industry, has a range of wisdom, and he actually gives you tips on how to use your voice and how to read copy. So if you're struggling on how to, to use your voice or how to read a commercial script, how to read a documentary script, he's the right guy for you. And I'll be able to share even more with uh, Rose here, who actually was gracious enough to invite me uh, to this uh, webinar with you. And yes, so since I'm not able to be with you, I really, really would love to hear from you. So my social media handles are written there. You can come to my DM and tell me, hey, Cynthia, I listened to your voice over webinar. And yes, you can reach out to me there. If you have any more questions, my email is right there. Please write to me, introduce yourself, tell me where you're from, and just remind me that you listened to this webinar and I'll be able to sort you out. And if I ever hear of any call-outs that are specific to you guys, they're looking for voices, um, I'll be able to send them over to Rose and she'll be able to circulate them to you. So 
but thank you so much and yes it was lovely preparing this presentation for you and i hope that i will be able to hear your voice in a commercial very soon bye bye <laughs>